find our ninja. Okay. Cool. We went to uh, this dump, the second dump, and to the Kanadendal dump to scavenge things. The Kanadendal dump was dirty, dude. We had to freaking mask up and with the mask up, I was burning plastic all over the place. It was really. I even had my the door open and the stick ready there because it was just like whoa. It's largely a kids festival. It's focused on yeah, I can check. Mm, which is a nice change, but it also means you have to think about things in a very different way. Yeah, but see, but that's part of the eco brick challenge. So anyone is given the challenge, stuff the most stuff the most bricks you have to do it on site though you don't bring the bricks mm -hmm. on uh, so you go into the dump you find stuff stuff it stuff it in your bottles exchange your bottles and then you can go and swap out your points for food uh, clothing and toys and then they can exchange the points with anything in this workshop there's like cans of food clothes um, vegetables and we keep the um, eco bricks we keep because we are using them to go down at the dump site. One black bag full of eco bricks, One we gave them 10 points per black bag. Eco bricks is an asset and it's got value. It's got value for building and, and people attached to that value. So they'll be. This is valuable because look at that, it pulls her own dogs. So we worked out one of those on dogs about 7,000 eco bricks. So 7,000 eco bricks also got a value. It's got a value for the people that build it. So the system funds itself. It's, and, it's, and it's backed by what? By something of value. Unlike what we have at the moment. It's like backed with nothing. But this yeah. is, there's a valuable thing here and it's already existing. So it's very easy to immediately put it on the open market and say it's a valuable. Yeah, I just think asset. I so really I, want you to talk about this to jo Joseph because no, we'll, we'll. and and that's why I think it would be great if we all went down to the dump site and just sat with, by the fire tonight. I had long been interested in upcycling plastics, especially in 2009. I wrote a paper called "The Appreciation of Plastic," mm -hmm. where I kind of just went into how plastic is made and what how is it being dealt with in the current system of either landfilling or water disposal or incineration um, or recycling and kind of measuring all of these with each other and this outlet to deal with plastic the eco brick you take the plastic bottle you stuff it full of all your plastic waste perhaps a more benign or even beneficial way of dealing with plastic waste because pretty much every other way is more or less toxic local solutions to global problems and here in Greaton, that looks like dealing with water, energy, housing, food, mm. and waste. And I've been dealing mostly with waste, and that's been kind of a main focus on our, on our program. But it's also been education, because everything kind of works in a loop. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Been working on all those different factors in different ways and Trashy Treasure landed up being the waste education kind of factor bringing people to the dump sites and my friend had been suggesting to me that I that I ha throw a party of some sort he was like <laughs> you should throw a party and invite all the local community and just like see what happens like try to make a connection try to make something happen okay let's change the name of the dump site to like the Great and Green Park we gotta have a festival at the dump site and like this space in particular because we'd already been visiting over here we were hanging out i was flicking pictures and we got the country <laughs> conquerors <laughs> Mensen en 
stuffed like a ridiculous amount of eco bricks. The first year he stuffed 183. And we've got a little fire going at the rubbish dump. <laughs> Who are these villagers that spread rumors I, I, I don't of know. fragrant plants? Nice with little guitars and sticks. Got a house made out of eco bricks. 